Hi, everyone. Hope you've all uh, had a good lunch. So I am KG Adadeji, as Emily said. And um, I'm a Nigerian Scouser that is also an honorary Brummy. I now live in London. I'm saying that because I don't want you to be um, stuck wondering where my accent from and distracted by that <laughs> while I'm talking. So now that we've got that out of the way, a little bit about some of the things I've done. I've worked in a lot of B2B companies that you've probably never heard of. Um, and there's a sprinkling of a couple that you have done, mostly in ed tech, building products that we've taken into market leading positions in the UK and other markets. And then I've recently taken a step into leadership um, at my previous ed tech company that got acquired by Sage, which is the uh, publisher, not the financial one. And then I'm also, and now I'm at the FT, and also I'm a community builder. So I used to run Product Tank Brum. Um, I was the EMEA coordinator for about 80 product tanks a while ago, and I really love uh, building community and mentoring people. And that's, those are some of the reasons that I'm here today. So it is really great to be here, but I have to admit that being on this stage feels kind of a bit like this moment. <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like. And as that picture shows you, I clearly like to live dangerously, especially because I requested the post-lunch slot. And so my plan is to keep you all, your eyes open, your attention engaged, by filling the gap between the great talks you've heard this morning about doing product and the ones after, to talk about gremlins. That's right, you heard right. I'm gonna talk about gremlins. So there's a beloved 80s movie in which this creature, a mogwai, isn't looked after properly, and that results in poor uh, Gizmo, this guy, creating a bunch of gremlin offspring who go on to create cause uh, like a bunch of trouble, a whole lot of trouble. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember that movie um, and the gremlins as being kind of mischievous, but mostly fun and harmless. And then I rewatched the movie recently, which I think is always risky when you rewatch any 80s movie. You never know what kind of problematic tropes you're gonna come across. <laughs> Um, like a little casual xenophobia, or the fact that I don't think it's supposed to be a horror movie, but the only black guy in the movie dies first. <laughs> like I said, problematic. But what I'm trying to get to is, upon rewatching the movie, I realized that those gremlins didn't just cause, like, you know, a bit of harmless trouble. They caused, they ran a one-night chaos campaign that left a whole town and a bunch of people needing a lot of fixing up. And so, that's why I want to talk about our gremlins. Tenuous link, I think, but I think I kind of made it work. Um, so for us, the gremlins that uh, I want to talk about are the things that plague us kind of daily in our work. Um, I want to talk about the fact that gremlins are normal. It's, you know, everyone's got some kind of gremlin that they're, they're dealing with, um, but they can get in the way of our well-being and our growth. And much like the fictional ones, if we don't look after ourselves properly, then they can cause quite serious trouble that lasts for much longer than one, one night, and I don't want that for any of us. So, in the interest of keeping the post-launch slump at bay, I've got a little audience participation, nothing too crazy, just a few questions. Put your hand up if you feel comfortable, but no pressure. So the first one is, who loves this job? There's 1,200 product people in here at a product management conference, so yeah, like, all the hands are up, that's great. I can't quite see the ones up there. <laughs> Fantastic, okay. Um, yeah? All right, so what about who gets up every day, super excited, super engaged, ready to solve problems at work every single day? Or, okay, we're human, so maybe most days? Less hands. All right. Who, okay, well, how about this one? Who has stared at that really important email on their phone today because it felt maybe a little bit easier than having to insert yourself into a conversation out there in the hall? Oh, okay, all right, you're chatty, chatty people, great. And does anyone feel stuck at any point? I think Susanna spoke a little bit about feeling stuck. And does anyone, yep, okay, I see some hands going up there. And does anyone uh, find it hard to share when they're struggling or when they feel stuck? Okay, thank you to the brave souls who put their hands up there. So thank you to everyone for participating. Um, I suspect that as we got further along in those questions, it probably started to feel a little bit uncomfortable. And um, 
I think some of those things probably did resonate for some people, but you might have felt a bit exposed, maybe a bit vulnerable to put your hand up. And you know what, that is okay. I guarantee you're not the only one who felt that way. So we all love this job. It can be super fulfilling, but product management can also be hard. And I believe that there's a lot of gremlins that we face along the way. Um, and like I said, it's okay, it's all very normal. But I would like to share four sets of gremlins that I think are quite common from my own experience, from the chats I've had with peers, from the people that I've mentored and managed. I think there's four sets of interrelated gremlins that I'd like to share today. And then I'd like to share four sets of antidotes to help you tame them and encourage us all to uh, look after ourselves and to uh, talk about our gremlins more openly. So let's get into meeting some gremlins. So to introduce the first couple of gremlins, I want to talk about the moments that led up to kind of what I decided to talk about today. So I'm not really a public speaker. Um, I'm kind of more of a background person, like platform and other people. So when I was asked to do this talk, like my, my response was like, oh shit. Um, <laughs> then followed very closely by being super grateful to be asked in the first place. And briefly considered saying no, but I am minded to say yes to scary things, so that's why I'm here, guys. Um, and then I started to take a look, once I'd said yes, a look at, at the list of previous speakers on this stage, and the OO started to go, I'm no, like, John Cutler, Melissa Perry, Teresa Torres, so that's going on in my mind, and a friend of mine said to me, don't worry, you've just been in stealth mode. I was like, yes, that's it, I've just been in stealth mode. And then um, I made the mistake of watching the recap video from last year, and one of the, um, the speakers from last year said that it's the holy grail for basically, this stage is the holy grail for basically anyone doing product. The holy grail, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then someone, email, someone, one of the people who messaged me to say, hey, well done, was like, it's a, you know, it's a career defining moment that stage. So yeah, I mean, the pressure <laughs> starts to kick in. And so did the gremlins. So that's how I ended up here. And that brief glimpse into that thought process is a good example of the first set of gremlins. And they are the dynamic tag team duo of the comparison gremlin and the self-doubt gremlin. These guys are like what happens when you end up in a competitive shootout against yourself. Um, these mofos basically make us doubt ourselves comp constantly, comparing our progress, our achievements to our peers. Um, believe that comparison is one of the biggest crazy makers that you can engage in. And all it does is feed self-doubt. So this manifests when we're doing things like worrying that we're not doing proper product. I was in a company where we, we had grown two products, two edtech products, to be market leaders in not just this market, but multiple markets. And I was there wondering whether I was doing proper product. Um, it's the sort of thing that can prevent you from growth and opportunities because we talk ourselves out of playing. Or um, you can drive yourself crazy trying to like, you know, push change in an organization that's just not ready for it. You know, trying to run optimization in an, in an organization, but you've not got the scale to actually do that. Been there. And it can make you indiscriminate in the things you try, because we're always consuming all of this content telling us how it should be. So you're trying all the stuff, you want to do it all. I have been guilty early in my career of abusing methodologies and being the Oprah of frameworks. <laughs> I've learnt, I have learnt my lesson, and if you've ever, if you're a member of any kind of underrepresented group, or you've ever had to challenge your identity in any serious way, there will be those moments where you wonder, should you be in the room, or do they just want someone like you in the room, and is that what everyone else is thinking? So, that's, those are the first set of gremlins. Does that sound familiar to anyone here? Okay, I see some heads nodding. I'm not the only one out here in these streets. That's great. Right, the second gremlin is the progression war gremlin. So we will, many of us will face this at different points in our career, and I think some of what Susanna spoke to earlier um, is it, part of this. So from my, ex my own experience and from people that have mentored and managed, it can look like a few things. So it can look like that feeling of being stuck thinking that there's no opportunity for progression where you are, or it could be that you lack clarity on how it is that you're gonna progress, so what is the right next set of skills to develop and how do you go about doing that? Or it could be that you're not sure what the right next type of role to, to do is, what kind of company, what kind of product, that kind of thing. 
But this gremlin can also keep you in your comfort zone. So you've been somewhere, you're doing well, you really probably should be thinking of moving on, but you, you haven't done that. Or it's because you are worried that you don't have um, the right skills or the right capabilities or enough skills and capabilities to go on to the next place. And I think women suffer from this a lot. And um, maybe you did make that move, right? Because it's nice to be wanted and you need a job. But then you get there, and something's not right. You're still frustrated, not quite sure then what it is that it is you're looking for, what is the right kind of role for you. So those are some of the things that can come up when you hit the progression wall gremlin. And then we get to this next gremlin, and this one affects every single person in here, every single product person, no matter what stage of your career that you're at. It is the challenge that we have to try and maintain a work-life balance and avoid burnout. I've got another name for this one. It's the sneaky ninja gremlin, because this one really can sneak up on you without you realizing. So product management is demanding. Um, we are trying to, we're trying to deliver value and impact, solve the right problems for our customers and for our business. And so you are doing a bunch of discovery. You've got data to analyze, backlogs to manage, delivery activities to do, sprint rituals to get to, stakeholders to engage, deadlines to meet, impatient CEOs to wrangle. And then we hit the quarterly planning circus and it all just gets a little bit more crazy, right? So many meetings, when does the work actually happen, let alone the thinking. And then we're constantly challenged by all sorts of stakeholders and customers, constantly have to justify what you're doing. And if you've ever worked anywhere where everything is on fire all of the time, you've got angry customers to deal with and you're just trying to hold it together. So no wonder imbalance can sneak in, am I right? Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. I think that the working environments and the cultures that we have created, and I think those of us who are leaders in the room have to reckon with this, because even when you work in an organization that values well-being, those practices, those environments can still help us form bad habits. And I certainly developed some in my career. You know, I loved the job, I was learning, I was progressing, doing well, so what did I do? I basically did a Rihanna. Worked. <laughs> but like, not in a fun way like Rihanna was. I was not putting in that kind of work, I'll tell you that now. <laughs> um, so things came to a head for me uh, personally um, when the pandemic hit and combined with the, the challenges of my first leadership role is when things came to a head. So I, I kind of forgot like, to find balance with quite serious consequences for me. Um, I forgot the basics of how to look after myself. I overworked to the point of overwhelm and exhaustion and there was a day in November 2020 where I woke up and just started crying. Like, what the hell's going on? Just started crying. I felt so exhausted, so unwell. And that it's just, I just knew there was like no way I could keep going in that way, how I, how I had been going. Now that day in November 2020 was not the day that I burnt out. That was just a day that like my mind and my body was like calling it quits. Like, dude, you gotta stop this. I'd ignored all the signals leading up to that. And so, um, this definition of burnout, it's quite an old one, it's quite from an old study from the 70s, but it really resonated with what I was feeling at that time. And what you don't realize is that when we are imbalanced, when we have a lack of balance, it causes damage to so many things. Your physical and mental health are affected, your productivity is affected, your cognitive processing is affected, it can affect your relationships, your sense of self, you start to have these feelings of guilt and all of that just becomes this like self-feeding cycle. So when I tell you that burnout is a messy bitch, folks, I am not playing. Um, even if burnout isn't your story, and I really do hope it never is, I want you to think about what ways that you are letting imbalance sneak into your life today. All right, we're at the last set of gremlins. And these ones are, um, from my observation, that not all step changes are made equal. So when we are in those points of significant uh, step changes, or in those points where we're learning and challenged in not an incremental way, um, that's where what I call the major step change and the fear gremlins can kick in. So this happened for me when I hit my first uh, leadership, uh, stepped into the leadership for the first time. So picture this, right? You've got to leadership, it's a culmination of all the hard work and the learning and development that you've done. Um, now I can run the proper product show. I'm ready for this. Let's go. And then um, this pretty major 
unprecedented external thing happen, yeah, the, the pandemic, I kind of thought about giving it its own gremlin, but it doesn't deserve one. That's what happened. The very first week of the UK lockdowns was the week that I got announced as head of product and then spent eight weeks alone figure, uh, in solitary lockdown trying to figure out the job. So that's, that's what was going on. Um, so uh, but apart from the base level of fear that I think we were all going through during the pandemonium, the major step change gremlin really started to kick my ass. It was like starting again, realizing you're at the bottom of a skills ladder, um, realizing that the learning curve has just suddenly got steep again. And this shouldn't be a problem, right? We've all, including me, have developed a life and career of um, developing a growth and learning mindset, leaning into the things that are challenging. But this time, it didn't feel like it was a, a learning problem. It felt, um, sorry, like a, it didn't feel like it was a, a, a learning problem, but a capability problem. And so the fear gremlin kicked in, and that's where the feelings of being found out started to come up. And I wonder if anyone ever feels like that, like I got this job now, and maybe someone's going to find me out. Um, and the reason that happened is because the failure stakes at leadership just felt so much bigger. The fate of this business and the people who work in it and their livelihoods now rested on me and the leadership team. And I think it's important that we feel that, particularly as leaders, but not to the extent where like, the fear immobilizes us. So what did this look like? On the outside, I think it looked good. I was doing a good job. On the inside, I was just like, constantly anxious, uh, forgot foundational lessons, like it's not my job to have all the answers. I was inconsistent in looking after myself and forgot to ask for help most importantly. And like I said, I did a Rihanna. Um, and so those are the gremlins. As you can see, they're all kind of interrelated. One feeds the other and the other. And I think they're the most common ones that probably come up for us as common people, uh, as product people. Um, there are lots of gremlins, I'm sure, that we all go through. So to recap, we've got the tag team duo of comparison and self-doubt. Then there's the point where you might feel like you've hit that progression wall, like you're stuck. There's imbalance, which I think is really, really major thing for us to contend with as product people. And then when you are growing and taking those big leaps, you might hit the major step change and the fear gremlins. Who recognized a few of those? Okay, I'm not alone out here, and that's great. Um, so let's talk about some antidotes. And again, with these antidotes, I think there's lots of antidotes out there. Um, I don't want you to feel like, oh, I've got to do all of these things. These are just some things that you can try um, to, to um, help you. And if, even if you do just one of those, it's great. So let's go through these. Cultivate self-awareness. So this is essentially like a discovery practice for you. It's a base layer to all of them. And the strategies here are create space to reflect, uh, learn about yourself, seek feedback and celebrate success, and prioritize self-care. So creating the space to reflect is like time to talk to your customers, except it's you. Do a regular check-in. For me, that looks like a personal retro. There's a slot in my calendar every Friday doing a personal retro, checking in with myself mentally and physically. I can also access therapy. I'm very privileged. Whatever your thing is, just find how you create that space. Once you've done that, how do you actually then learn about yourself once you've created the space? It's a lifelong endeavor, but in this context, learn about your patterns, your comfort zone, your discomfort zone, what triggers you, what fear looks like for you, and actually what helps you thrive. That's really important. Seek feedback and celebrate success. We're product people, we're good at getting feedback, but don't shy away from the positive stuff. Let other people gas you up. And then prioritize self-care. Um, we're good at prioritizing, so prioritize this. Treat it like an experiment uh, or a series of experiments into what helps you recharge and what helps you find energy. So for me, it's kind of like sleep, hydration, exercise, diet, and then a bunch of woo-woo stuff like meditation and breath work. Whatever your thing is, just find that routine for yourself and have compassion for yourself in these moments. Struggling is natural, fear is natural. Don't beat yourself up about it. That's really hard to do. The second is to be intentional. So you've probably heard the term treat yourself like a product and that's really the essence of this. Get clear on what's important, build yourself a growth roadmap, ask for what you need, and don't be constrained by where you are. So getting clear on what's, what's important, that's like building your personal decision stack. If you're far away from your values and the things that are important to you, you'll be miserable. So think about your vision, think about your principle, think about your values and your goals. Build your growth roadmap. Think about the skills you want to develop. I hope you have a development plan, but if you don't, start to think about that. Then think about the context that you want to get good in. So thinking about what type, stage, size of company, um, the types of products that are then going to help you build on those skills, um, develop those skills you want to build. 
And um, I, when I learned my lesson of staying too long in places, I got very intentional about getting good in lots of different contexts. So for example, when I moved to National Express, I did so because at that point, I'd not had any B2C experience or e-commerce experience. I wanted to learn how to do products at scale. I also wanted to develop my experimentation skill set and work more with data. So those were very specific reasons why I made that move. So think about things in those, those ways. Ask for what you need. Um, if you don't ask, you don't get, right? I once asked a boss to buy me a train ticket once a month to London indefinitely so that I can meet product people. He actually said yes. <laughs> um, and I've done many things like that in my career. So if you don't ask, you definitely won't get it. So you might get a no, but at least if you ask, there's a possibility of a yes. And finally, don't be constrained for your development goals by where you are. Um, so when I worked at Vox Pop Me, I wanted to accelerate my mentoring skills, but we were like, Super small team, so I basically started mentoring in my own time, um, and I still do today, um, as a way to learn how to develop people. So don't, don't constrain yourself by where you are. Third one, find community. I am preaching to the converted. You are all here today, but beyond coming to a conference, I don't know, once or twice a year, big conference like this, I urge you to find ways to form connections, um, nurture relationships with peers, and this is where you can find mentors, and mentors can really accelerate your growth. Solve problems together, and if anything, just having community helps you realize you're not the only one going through something or facing a problem or struggling. When I ran Product Tank Brum, we had a segment called the Product Therapy Couch, um, which is precisely for this, and it was one of the most popular segments that we ran. And uh, when I was doing this talk, for example, I got lots of encouragement from, from people in this community, offers of help to prepare, that kind of thing. And then the final one here is to meet your organization where it's at. Some of the most miserable I've ever been is not meeting the org where it's at, you know, raging against the machine and not bringing people along. And that's because we're doing the comparison and self-doubt thing, looking where we are, thinking there's a gap. Um, but there will be at least one place where you can um, influence basically influence and affect change. So focus on the sphere of influence that you do have. What can you develop where you are? And try different things, stay curious. Um, you know, sometimes you can learn about the business and learn new skills, not in the context of your role. I once uh, agreed to go to Australia to do the keynote for our CEO, because he couldn't go. Aside from the ulterior motive of wanting to go to Australia, um, I learned a bunch of stuff on that trip. I got into rooms several levels above me and learned how to, to engage with senior stakeholders. So those are some of the gremlins you might face, and these are the antidotes that we just talked about. So remember to cultivate self-awareness and, and um, be intentional, find community, and meet your org where it's at. But I'd like to throw in a bonus gremlin real quick. So I've been in some really supportive organizations when I have struggled and not said anything, and I think I'm probably not the only one who does that. Um, and organizations have shifted, thankfully, towards prioritizing well-being but individuals can still feel isolated. So I think that work cultures, despite that shift to uh, wanting to support people through well-being, the shift, the work culture still sit outside of that desire. And you've also got stigma. No one wants to be the product person who, you know, couldn't cut it or couldn't handle the pressure. So I think it's really important um, that we remember that silence can, can be a gremlin. And a really important thing happened for me. There's a, a guy called Dominic Yost. He's a CPO at a company called Doist. And he got in touch a few years ago, wanted to do some research about self-care and product leaders. He interviewed 50 product leaders and then did a talk a few months later um, to share his learnings on that. And he was so generous, so open, so vulnerable in sharing his experience of struggling and of burnout. And like, Dominic's a big deal. He's done like so much stuff. He's managed really big teams. So that was super impactful to me to see that. In a moment, it was exactly what I needed in a moment where I felt ashamed for struggling. So what he did that day, I'm going to give you a spoiler about the movie, the end of the movie. Basically, they shined direct sunlight on the final gremlin to get rid of it. And that's what Dominic did for me that day. Um, so I'd like to continue the conversation that he started by shining direct sunlight on these gremlins. I hope that... Even if it helps one person today, that would be success. So by shining direct sunlight on them, I hope that you leave here feeling that you're not alone in struggling, that you leave here knowing it's not uncommon to struggle, and that we all leave here with the intention to shine a light on these gremlins, to talk more openly about them, and to make sure that we support each other in them.
So remember, you might hit comparison and self-doubt. You may hit that progression wall. Imbalance may sneak into your life, and major step changes and fear can really ground you. But your antidotes are there. Cultivate self-awareness. Be intentional. Find community, because it takes a village. And meet your organization where it's at. So, and remember that it's all of our jobs to open the curtains, shine direct sunlight on your gremlins, and uh, talk about these things out loud. Thank you very much.